Good day, beloved listeners. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I am your friend and brother, Professor Emeritus Stephen Adair. We have been going through a series titled Living by Strategy. We have had opportunity to look at the importance of having almost like a global positioning instrument, which we call the organizing principle, which will make sure that all aspects of your strategy cohere. Because the same way as the North Pole allows us to find direction, if we have a compass or anything of that nature, no matter where we are, we can find our location. So each one of us, needs to have a similar positioning system. We went on to explain that for you to live by strategy, you must be clear with your life mission and vision. That is a purpose-driven way of living. And that this must be anchored to your values and principles. We looked at the power of vision and the importance of setting goals for the major areas of your life, such as, such as your physical life, your spiritual life, and your financial or prof and professional life. Today, I want to bring them all together and introduce what a snapshot, which I call the wheel of life, the wheel of life. Those who are familiar with my books, Living by Strategy and Managing Your Life, will have come across the wheel of life. I use the wheel for good reason because a, a wheel must be balanced. And I find that oftentimes people may be successful as professionals and yet other areas of their lives, marriage and even finances may not be in good shape or vice versa. And therefore, I call it the wheel of life because all aspects of your life has to be in sync. It doesn't mean that you are spending the same amount of time. You go to work for eight hours. You don't spend eight hours sitting in front of your spouse to see that your, your marriage is good. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But you must give equal importance in managing each aspect of your life. So I, the wheel, when it is not balanced, if you are on a bicycle or even in a car and your wheel is not balanced, you know what it takes and you run to the nearest mechanic as soon as possible. So I like using the wheel of life to represent or to summarize what it entails to live by strategy or having a purpose-driven life. And the bicycle wheel is my preference because they have gotten the spokes to make it firm. And talking about setting the goals, I identified eight areas which we must be setting our goals, namely spiritual life, social life, marital life, family life, intellectual life, financial life, professional life, and of course our physical life. Each of these areas, in order to manage your life well, must get the necessary attention. For example, in the physical area, it is known that if you walk on average for about 30 to 45 minutes briskly, three to four times a week, your whole body is recalibrated and you will be in good health. Of course, you must eat well and have enough rest. And we must give attention to it because if we don't, we will pay dearly, especially as we grow older. Unless we have a genetic disease, normally by looking well after your life, you have 
really generally good health until of course we we'll all die and as my wife would say something must kill us but we are talking about maintaining good health again we must look after our social relationships our friendships a lot is said about empathy or in a more technical way emotional intelligence how to live with other people because people say that if you don't love your enemy, you invite yourself to a one-way battle for the rest of your life. You, and many people don't take good care, and especially in our part of the world, the political parties. You can see NPP and NDC insulting each other as if one has come from Mars and one from Venus. No. Your social relationship and what you say makes a difference. And of course, you must have goals for your marital life. There are many people who are married. If you ask them, why are they married? Today, they have no answer. In the olden days, at least, they had, if not adequate, at least some answer. I want to have children. I believe that if you don't know why you are married, you will find you are husband or your wife impossible because oftentimes you will de demand from them with what is impossible for another human being to meet. But if your aim is to glorify God, to be a friend for one another and to provide a congenial atmosphere of love that both of you will realize your full potential, then you are up to something. Care about your family, life, another spoke. If you have many, have even children without having a clear objective why they have had the children and how they are going to raise them up. The tendency these days, and I run a school, they think that when they, their children have academic training, that is enough. And therefore, many are training educated devils, which we have, we see them all around in our public service and our political life. We have trained smart thieves. That's what we mean by corrupt people. And people who think that when they are given a job, it's for their benefit and not for that of the employer or even the nation. We must have clear goals and agenda to raise our children in the fear of God. As Jesus, as it was said about Jesus, and he grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. Physical growth, intellectual growth, social growth, and spiritual growth. And we must devote attention to our families. Again, intellectual life. Many have, once they finish university, they have no goal. It's just a matter of pursuing their career. Listen, the mind is to be trained lifelong. And it is Realize said that the mind is the only part of the body. The more you use it, the more you feed it, the better it becomes. And therefore, what is you must have intellectual agenda. You must have, of course, uh, an agenda for your spiritual life. It makes a lot of difference. Even for Christians, it's not a matter of just being born again, which is important because unless a man or a woman is born again, he will go to hell. The Bible says God sent Jesus Christ to die for us. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And there's no other name given among men by which we will be saved except that of Jesus Christ. However, when we are saved, we need to have an organized way of growing in our spirituality as disciples of Jesus Christ. Reading the Bible, praying, fellowship, sharing the gospel, and the rest. You must have that wheel. Is often Part of the wheel is often left unattended. And of course, there is the professional life, which often takes over all the rest. A career is important. But being a teacher or a nurse or a doctor is not all important. If this all that you do, what happens when you go on retirement? And some these days you can go on retirement and live for 30 years, 40 years. Those who will be blessed to live up to 100. 
However, while you are working, it is the basis for you to make a lifelong contribution. It's a, a means whereby you earn a living. All these things are very important part of our lives as Christians in particular. And of course, there is the financial life. The wheel of life becomes a mechanism that allows us not to leave any part of our life not attended to. Not in terms of sharing time equally, but giving them the importance they need. For example, many people don't know that it's so easy to become a millionaire. If you invest even in CDs, 100 Ghana CDs at 17.5% per annum, in 30 years you are a millionaire. If you do 500 CDs, in 20 years you are a millionaire. If you do 1,000, in 17, 18 years you are a millionaire. And those who can afford by just investing 3,211 at 17.5%, you become a millionaire. But that requires attention. Why? Because you must do this consistently to tap into the power of compound interest. It is therefore important for us to make sure that our wheel is not only big enough, but is balanced. However, a wheel by itself is useless. The wheel becomes useful only when it is propelling towards a certain direction. In other words, you can't say, you know, yes, I have a wheel. Yes, you have a nice wheel. It can be even an alloyed wheel or even a golden one. It has to be powered and directed. It, so a wheel by itself is a very good tool, but not by, uh, not by lying down there. And that is where your mission and your vision gives the direction as to where you are going in terms of your life. So you must shepherd each of the areas. However, you need a purpose. That is your mission and your vision to give the direction as to where you are organizing all these two. You want to be rich. To what end? It must be feeding your purpose. Intellectually, you want to be strong. For what? To me, so that you can feed your purpose, your marriage, all of them. And it is known that people who are purpose-driven tend not only to achieve more, but they tend to be more satisfied because they are able to measure their progress and where they are going. And of course, your values and principles drive them. And how do you judge that you are going in the right direction from youth to adulthood to middle age to your old age and this is where your anchor helps that's what i've found to make life a ball so that at each point of time i can ask what would jesus do or what would jesus have me do and that make all things cohere the wheel of life also requires a part to be on. And of course, the part is time. Time and tide waste no, for no man. Your wheel must be running over time from your youth to your old age. Being particular at each stage in your life. I hear people say, oh, you will make time. Nobody ever makes time. God has fixed it. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours a day, 7 days in a week. Except when God decides to intervene, which so far as I know, he did it only once. When Joshua prayed because he was a new terrain fighting and therefore the local people had an advantage if it got night dark. And he says, God, let the sun stand still and the sun stood still. But God does not work this miracle for us every day. We must adapt to time. It is said that the only constant in life is change and the ability to manage change. And in this case, from one stage of your life to the other is important. I have found the wheel of life to be a very important instrument and a simple one 
in managing my life. It's anchored to Jesus, the organizing principle. My mission, which for those who were with me earlier, is captured in the hymn, a charge to keep I have, God to glorify, never dying so to save and fit it for the sky, to live for God and other people. It is almost like an irony how that people who live not for themselves enjoy life best. That is how God made us, so that we have continuous fellowship with him. But then you must be able to translate that as to each stage of your life, about 10-year periods, what does that translate to? For example, there was a time whereby getting qualification was most important to me, especially from the age of 16 when I entered teacher's college to the time I was 25 years, I finished my master's. The PhD came later, but that was a bonus. But those years were so vital. In my late 20s, my family, my marriage and my family was proud. proud. In the 40s, you enter into leader, I entered into leadership and professional work took importance. In my 50s, I was more concerned of establishing one of the best universities in this country, that of Gimpa. In my 60s, my wife's health became quite a challenge and I spent most of my time taking care of her at the same time, helping the Pentecost University and Ashasi University, by God's grace, making some contribution there. In my 70s, it is, I no longer have children. My grandchildren are being taken care of by my, children, my own children. I'm spending my time serving my country and also establishing, by God's grace, one of the finest secondary schools in this country, Ghana Christian International High School. So your vision will change. And it is particular to you as an individual. And you will find that when you have that mission and vision, you get the energy and the vim to continue. And at each time, your values should remain the same integrity in the world in our part of the world whereby you know lying and you know, shifting values have become the norm you must have your values clear personal what i'm talking about not values for your company you are talking about integrity honesty consistency and reliability whatever you will want to because your values should remain the same and they should support your mission while your vision will be adapted from epoch to epoch because they are meant to take care of part of your mission the joy of living by strategy is that you know where you are going you know how you are going there and in between you are not going to falter because the tendency is that some people by not looking at their wheel of life become what i call successful failures they achieve certain areas in your their life with excellence often they are professional but they mess up with their marriage they mess up with their family life even financially they become glorified thieves with corruption and they are of no value to society. The worst part of it is that if you don't take care of all aspects of your wheel and especially you live out the spiritual, you will end up in hell. For what shall it profit a man or a woman to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? I want to encourage you to look at your life as a wheel, which has got gotten various aspects, professional aspect, physical aspect, spiritual aspect, social aspect, marital, family, intellectual, financial aspect, and give the modicum of attention to each one of them in such a way that your wheel of life will be rounded. 
that you are also clear with your purpose and your vision so that you know where you are going. You are not singing, heaven knows where we are going, but we know we will. And that your life is propelled by your values. And every now and then, at each epoch, fine-tuning your life to meet the situation. Above all else, never forget that all you do must be anchored to your organizing principle or your true note. Something which make all of them not individual things like juggling eight balls of your wheel together, but because of Christ. In my case, because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I live to please him, I can always ask in my finances, what would Jesus have me do? In my social relationships, in my profession, and so long as I'm willing to obey Christ, all of them become clear in answers. I trust that you will meet again next week when I will be sharing how you will translate this wheel of life into a personal strategic plan and illustrate what it means sharing a few of my latest personal strategic plan for the my years 70 to 80 years shalom and may the lord be with you and i wish to meet you again next week on youtube but always on saturday morning at 8 30 meet me on ZFM 101.9. ZFM 101.9. Let me sign off and wish you the best as we meet again over living by strategy. Thank you.